Now, the first and one of the biggest advantages of the EOS RP over the R7 is the fact that you can buy it used for about half the price, or you can buy it new for around 30 to 40% off the price of the R7. So that is a fairly big difference. And if you're on a budget, that's obviously going to make a significant difference. It also gives you a bit more money for some of the RF lenses, which you're probably going to want to buy once you get into this system. So definitely a big difference when it comes to the price. Now, when it comes to the two different bodies and the handling and the way they feel in the hand, you're gonna find that the RP is smaller, it's lighter, and it has a slightly smaller grip, where the R7 has is bigger, it's heavier, and it has a little bit bigger grip. Having said that, when I was using them, there were times where I wasn't sure which camera I was using. So they aren't so significantly different that you're gonna probably love one but hate the other. But if you are used to sort of smaller crop sensor cameras and you're coming from those smaller crop sensor mirrorless cameras and you like that kind of lightweight advantage of those cameras and that camera system, then the RP is gonna feel a little bit more comfortable for you to hold. And after a long day of hiking and walking around, you probably will notice the weight difference between the two. Now the button and dial layout on the RP feels a bit more conventional to me because you've got the you've got the dial here, which is the same on the R7 and the RP. But back here on the RP, you have the sort of the thumb dial, which you traditionally see on the DSLRs and mirrorless cameras for years, where the R7, they have replaced that with this joystick and dial all in one thing, which mixed reviews from different people. When I first started using it, I did not like it. Now I'm kind of getting used to it. I think I still prefer the conventional dial on the RP as it is right now, but I don't doubt that over time I could get used to the R7 and it could feel just as good. But I do think it is a little bit more natural when you've got your thumb back there. Uh, just turning a dial this way does feel a bit more natural than sort of turning a dial this way for me. The other thing you're obviously gonna notice is with the R7, you're getting this joystick. Joystick is a little bit interesting because it's got like a push in as kind of like an enter function, but then you've got a push to the side to move around. And I did find at times I was like pushing it in and doing the sort of enter or return function when I meant to be pushing back and forth. It is something I'm getting used to. I really didn't like it at first. I am, it is starting to grow on me. Um, but once again, at least you do have a joystick on this one where the RP, you don't have any joystick function at all. Now, the other thing I like about the R7 is you have got, you can basically turn this camera on and off and can fully control it with one hand from off to photo mode to video mode. Uh, because it has a dial here, which has got your on for photo and then your video. And this is obviously the hand you're holding it in. So you just flip that on and off where the RP has put the on and off switch over here, which means it's really a two handed operation to turn this on and off. So I do like the fact that they have located the on and off switch here on the right hand. Uh, that just, I just like that a little bit better between the two cameras. But overall, I think the handling between the two cameras is very much going to be personal preference. I didn't think one really outshone the other. It's probably just a matter of what you're used to and what you prefer, but just based on the handling and the feel of the bodies in my hands, I think it's a tie. When it comes to battery life, the R7 has a much bigger battery. Uh, the one that's been in the 70D, 80D, 90D, um, it's in many of the EOS R cameras. Uh, this is going to get you a significantly better battery life. It is a significantly bigger battery. If we look at the RP, it has this tiny little battery that was in some of the old DSLRs. It was also in the Canon M6 Mark II. So you can see that is a tiny, tiny battery by comparison. Having said that, if you just look at the specs and the, the milliamp hours on these two batteries, you're going to think that the R7 is just gonna blow away the RP. The RP is surprisingly good with this tiny little battery. Keeping in mind, it doesn't have IBIS, it doesn't shoot all those extra frames per second. It has a lower resolution display. So even though this battery in this camera is rated to like 250 shots or something like that, I actually found that I was probably getting around four to 500 or so, 450 shots. I also found that I could get well over an hour of continuous shooting in video. So even though the battery is smaller, it's nowhere near as bad as you might think. 
Also keep in mind the batteries are cheaper and smaller. So just buying an extra one of these and throwing it in your pocket, you're probably gonna get battery life that is similar to what one battery is in the R7, if not better. Now, one significant advantage that the R7 has over the RP is the weather sealed body. That is gonna be a great advantage if you get caught out in the rain or if you're working in dusty or dirty environments very often. Keeping in mind, you're really only gonna get full advantage of the weather sealed body if you're also using a weather sealed lens of which the kit lens is not. So you're going to have to step up the price point to, be, to get yourself an entirely weather sealed package. The RP is obviously not weather sealed. So even if you buy one of those more expensive weather sealed lenses, your body is still not going to be weather sealed. The R7 also has dual card slots that is going to give you extra capacity. It is also going to give you the ability to have a backup of the photos that you're taking. So it can go to the two different cards. You can also separate the different formats and the different cards. And there's a number of different advantages to having the dual card slots. It also has its own door for access to those cards. And then the battery is in a separate door where with the RP, the setup is similar to many of the more less expensive Canon cameras where your card slot and your battery slot are in the same place. So that is definitely a win to the R7. Now, when looking through the EVF, to me, I cannot tell any difference. I think the specs are the same, but when I go back to back, they really look identical to me. So I think this is a tie between the two. Now on the screens, the screen on the R7 is a 1.62 million dot, I think. And the RP is like just over 1 million or around 1 million dot. When I was using them in normal use, I didn't feel like I was noticing a big difference, but when I went out of my way to like pay attention, I definitely noticed that there was a lot more resolution on the R7. And this might come into play when you're sort of in challenging situations and you're trying to make sure sort of you're nailing focus or nailing exposure. Certainly those extra pixels, if you're using the screen to do that, are going to make quite a big difference. Now, if you're an EVF shooter, if you're shooting through the viewfinder, obviously it's somewhat irrelevant, but in most people's practical use cases, you're not going to notice a difference. But if you do look for it, you are definitely getting more detail out of the R7. One of the headline features of the R7 is the fact that it's got in-body image stabilization. That is something that you are not getting on the RP. Another clever thing in the R7 is when you take the lens off to change lenses, it actually brings the shutter curtain down so the sensor isn't exposed to dust or grit or water or mist or whatever, where the RP, it just sits open and you just can see the sensor. And if there's dust and dirt around, it could get in onto the sensor. So that's a simple thing, but a big difference. But definitely when you look at that in-body image stabilization and the R7's in-body image stabilization is excellent, both for photo, photo and for video but I was particularly impressed with how stable it was for video. That is something that uh, the R5, R6 being full frame, you get a lot of wobble on the corners where this crop sensor and this IBIS is super, super stable. So it's something you could definitely use for vlogging and walking around video. And for a lot of people, that IBIS is going to eliminate the need for a gimbal. Now, in addition to the fact that the RP is around half the price used or 30 to 40% off new, we are comparing a full frame sensor to a crop sensor. And what that means is when using the same lenses, you are going to be able to get a more blurry background with the EOS RP. I think this is particularly important for a lot of people out there that are taking photos. Think of professional photos or a high quality photos as having a blurry background. It's, it's something that they, when they think of something that looks like a great photo, they think about a blurry background. This is very, very common. And it's easier to achieve that look with the RP. The other thing about being able to blur out that background is when you're in situations where you want to sort of draw attention to your subject and make something that looks uh, really cinematic or beautiful, by being able to really blow out that background, it makes it easy for the viewer's eye to be drawn to the thing that's in focus and that background to be just sort of blown out. And in some situations you can have a blur, like a sort of a, a messy, busy background with all kinds of stuff going on, but you really wanna isolate your subject. You are going to, with the right lens, just be able to totally obliterate that background to the point where you don't even know what's back there. Now. You can get a blurry background on the R7. That is absolutely true. And there's a lot of situations where 
you actually find that the background only has to be so blurry to get you that advantage of drawing your attention to the subject in the frame. So in some situations, even though the background might be more blurry with the RP, it actually doesn't matter because the photo with the R7 will be blurry enough. But when we are trying to achieve the most blurry background possible and obliterate that background and really draw the attention to the subject, that's where the RP and its full frame sensor are definitely gonna have an advantage. And one of the big advantages to the RP, which I don't think a lot of people think about, is that there are years and years and thousands and thousands of very high quality full frame lenses that were designed for the EFS system that can be adapted and used on the RP. Now, these same lenses can be adapted and used on the R7, but they were designed to be full frame lenses. And I won't go into the technical nitty gritty of it, but in general, a lens that is designed to go on a crop sensor performs better on the crop sensor and a lens that was designed to go on a full frame sensor just works better on a full frame sensor. And really the crux of it is you have a lens that was designed sort of many years ago, some of them even for film, but they might've been designed to resolve 24 megapixels, 26 megapixels over a full frame sensor size. When you take that lens and you only use the middle of it and you're putting 32 megapixels through it, which you are in the R7, you often find that the lens sort of doesn't stand up and you actually don't get the same level of image quality you would get out of that same lens adapted on a full frame sensor. And not only are these lenses available, most of them very, very cheaply, much more cheaply than the standard RF mount lenses, you can get adapters for them. And this adapter that I recommend is like under $50. And now I've just decided that for all of my old EF lenses, I am just buying at these cheap adapters and I'm putting on all of them, just effectively turning them into RF lenses. So they've all got an adapter on them. I'm not even changing the adapter between lenses. I'm just strictly leaving it on all my lenses. And I will link that in the description down below because I've been through a few of them and some of them aren't very good and some of them you get a bit of play in. So Definitely make sure you get that one. As I said, it's 50 bucks and it is, it's as good as the Canon one, which costs like $200 or something like that. Now, in a previous video, I said that the full frame sensor of the RP had a significantly better high ISO and low light performance than the Canon R7. Now that I've had some time to shoot these cameras side by side, I find that it is almost indistinguishable between the two cameras. And what I've found is as you get to higher ISO, if you turn off the high ISO noise reduction in both cameras, what you see with the raw files or the camera or the files that have not had the noise reduction applied by the cameras, the RP actually retains the detail but has a lot of high ISO noise in it, where the R7 just kind of loses detail, but it actually looks a bit smoother. Once you put the noise reduction on in both cameras, they are almost indistinguishable from each other. So each camera does a very good job of sort of compensating for whatever those shortfalls might be. Having said that, if my life depended on taking a low light photo, I would still go with the RP, but it is so close that I would not pick one camera over the other based on high ISO performance alone. Now, when it comes to dynamic range, I previously reported that I felt the RP had better dynamic range than the R7. I have really struggled to do any sort of scientific testing to demonstrate this. And as I tried to play with it, I found that they were very, very similar. Anecdotally, I think the RP may be similar or possibly even a little bit worse at low ISO, but better than the R7 at high ISO but I think you really just have to take that with a grain of salt. I'm sure someone will test these different sensors. Um, DxO Mark has done some testing on the RP. It actually does at higher ISOs uh, outperform a number of the Sony cameras in dynamic range. So although it is known to have not a great dynamic range at lower and base ISO, as you get higher in the ISO, it actually gets better and is better than a lot of the cameras that nobody talks about having poor dynamic range. So uh, I would say right now, just the jury's out on that one. Anecdotally, I think they're similar and based on what I've seen, I would not pick one over the other based on that. And when it comes to the video specs, unless you're just planning to shoot 1080p video, 
The Canon R7 is miles ahead of what the RP can do. The RP can shoot full sensor 1080p with dual pixel autofocus. If you want 4K, it is a cropped in 4K and you lose your dual pixel autofocus. Uh, the RP can shoot 1080p up to 60 frames per second. The R7 can shoot detailed 4K downsampled from 6K, and this is a 10-bit 422 codec. So this is incredible, like this is cinema quality footage that you're getting out of this as far as sort of the detail and all the information that is in that file. You can also shoot a not oversampled 4K, which is a little bit smaller file, and you get a little bit less rolling shutter, and you can shoot that sort of lower, lower quality 4K uh, for 60 frames per second as well. It will also do 120 frames per second in 1080p. So when it comes to video specs, it is not even close. I will say the RP 1080p footage looks great if that's all you need, but I think for most video shooters nowadays, it isn't even a close contest. It's definitely the R7. Now, the autofocus performance is really the big one. That is probably the thing that people are gonna think separate these cameras the most, and it's the one thing in a previous video I did that people kept saying, but the autofocus, but the autofocus, the R7's autofocus is great, the RP's autofocus is terrible. Well, I would say when I was using them for general purpose photography, taking photos of people or objects nearby, putting up to my camera, looking at a scene, pushing the button, I found at least 50% of the time the, they function in a way that was so close or so similar that the difference would have been irrelevant. Maybe the RP was a tiny bit slower, but not enough that it actually changed the photo or the results of the photos at all. About 25% of the time, the RP would manage to get a similar shot, but it would be noticeably slower on a level that maybe you would actually miss the shot because it was slow enough. If you had a little bit of action or if it was like a candid moment, there is a better chance that you're going to miss those shots with the RP than the R7. And then about 25% of the time, it was really, really clear the R7 was grabbing focus, nailing the photos, and doing stuff that the RP just absolutely, absolutely couldn't do. Having said all that, the RP really surprised me with how good its autofocus was, particularly when the person or whatever you're trying to photo was filling a good portion of the frame. That's certainly when it just performed on par with the R7. And probably the biggest problem with the RP is every once in a while, it would just not seem to know what's going on. It would just get lost and you couldn't get it to focus. This was a vast minority of the time. It was a very small amount of the time, but the R7 virtually never did that. It was always pretty confident in what it was taking a photo of. But the R7 actually had its own problems. And we, I did a couple of tests and one, I had my son walk uh, back in this alley and walk towards me. And once the camera, whether it be the RP or the R7, actually found his face, uh, knew, said, hey, we got him in, we're in focus, go ahead, let's shoot away. I would push the shutter button, hold it, and I would have him walk towards me and we'd see how many shots that we got in focus. The RP, he had to be way more filling the frame before it said, hey, there's a face here, let's go, it's in focus. When it would say that, I would push the shutter, it would take the photos, and until he got very, very close to the camera, all of the photos were virtually in focus. With the R7, it would pick him off way, way in the distance. I mean, he was like tiny, like in the frame. I was surprised. I couldn't believe that it figured out this is a person, this is an eye, this is a face. So I'd say, okay, it's got you. I pushed the button and he would start walking towards the camera and I, the camera was giving me all the confidence that it, it knew where he was and he was in focus. But for the first, you know, five or 10 steps, a number of photos it would take he just wasn't in focus. It just wasn't focusing on him at all. It was just some focusing on something else. So even though the camera was telling me, I got him, he's in focus, he wasn't in focus. Now, once he got closer and he was still further away than what it took the RP to figure out sort of where he was, he became in focus and then he was in focus until he got very close to the camera, similar to the RP. So overall, the R7 was still getting you know better and more photos, 
but the R7 was giving me these sort of phantom ideas that I had shots in focus that I absolutely did not. And throughout the last few days of shooting, it has done that a number of times in all different types of photography, whether it be bird, wildlife, tracking cars, whatever. Particularly when the objects are far away, it says, we got it, fire away, and you're sure that you have got a detailed, sharp shot. And then when you look, and it's just front or back focused, and it's happened on a number of occasions. Now, one of the other tests I did is I had my daughter do a similar thing, walk into the frame until both cameras said, I've got you. Uh, I, they were about a similar distance where I was starting this. And then I said, okay, it's got you. I pushed the button, I would say, run at the camera. Now she would run at the camera and when we did this test a number of times uh, and she's running at the camera, the EOS RP got zero shots in focus. So this is the sport of sports and wildlife thing. When she was running at the camera with the RP, it didn't get a single shot, which is you know why people complain about the autofocus system. It's completely not usable for sort of sports and wildlife or fast action. The R7 got in general, probably 60 to 70% of the shots in focus. Mind you, she was running pretty quick and she's running right at the camera. It was a fairly challenging situation as far as light as well. It wasn't a high contrast situation. Overall, it's clear that the R7 is a better camera when it comes to autofocus, but I do want you to know that it is not perfect. It is not uh, that you just point it at anything mindlessly and push the button and you're going to get something in focus. It is going to miss and it's probably gonna miss more than you might think think it does based on sort of some of the reviews and the way people are talking about it. So just be aware of that. Now, in addition to the much better autofocus system in the R7, for sports and wildlife, you're also going to get 14 frames per second in mechanical shutter mode and 30 frames per second in electronic shutter mode, which is almost unheard of specs for a camera at this price point. The EOS RP, if you want autofocus tracking, which you probably do, you're only gonna get four frames per second mechanical shutter. So in that sort of sports and wildlife and fast action, the R7 is way, way, way ahead of what the RP can do. So who should buy which camera? Well, I think the most compelling case for the RP is the fact that it has a full frame sensor and it is half the price. This means that you can, for the same price as an R7 with a kit lens, you can buy the RP with the 35 f1.8 RF mount lens, the 50 mil Canon f1.8 RF mount lens, and an 85 millimeter f1.8 Viltrox lens. That is a combination of lenses that you can go shoot professional portrait photography, you could shoot a wedding, events, that is a professional photography kit that you could hand to just about any type of professional photographer, aside from somebody that needs something really wide for landscape. And they could do their job with that potentially for the rest of their lives. The R7 with the kit lens is not going to do that. What the R7 with the kit lens is going to do is it's going to be able to take very good wildlife photos even though you only get to 150, it's still, it's got that quick autofocus system and 150 is sort of usable for that depending on the situation. But beyond that, it is an incredible video camera with its IBIS system. And I will link the RP kit and my recommendations below so you can just go confirm the prices on the different lenses and products. Now, one of the best things you can do to improve your photography is not buy a new camera or buy a new lens. It's learn how to be a better photographer. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. I think this is the best tutorial I've ever done on photography. And if you wanna take better photos with the gear that you've got right now, just check out that video.